AEW Unrestricted. You're here with Will Washington, Aubrey Edwards, Hi. and the one and only, the CEO, the general manager of All Elite Wrestling. It is the one and only Tony Khan. Hey, it's great to be here. It's hey. one of my favorite weeks in pro wrestling. It's full gear week, and it's very special because it's the first ever AEW pay-per-view in Los Angeles in one of my favorite venues in the entire world of sports, the LA Forum. This is a dream come true for me personally and a lot of people in AEW, and it's great to be here with you today ahead of this huge weekend. We are officially in full gear week, and we had a great dynamite to get the week started. And let's talk about this huge pay-per-view coming up Saturday, this Saturday, tomorrow, if you're listening right when this comes out, November 18th, full gear. It's going to be a great card. We have a loaded show. And I think if you're talking about full gear, we have to start with the AEW World Championship match, MJF versus Switchblade Jay White. I've been wanting to see this match a long time, and I think fans all over the world are very excited for MJF versus Jay White for the AEW Championship this Saturday at AEW Full Gear. And certainly, two of the top wrestlers on the planet, very gifted athletes, both very charismatic, but these two have really developed into very hated rivals. Ooh. This has gotten a very personal, it's become a really heated situation, and I can't wait to see these two go one-on-one -on -one Saturday, this weekend on pay-per-view. You know, and MJF has a lot to gain here. MJF has been a fighting champion over, these, uh, over the last year that he's been the AEW World Champion. Especially in recent months. I think at first, MJF has, honestly, I don't think he set out to be a fighting champion. In fact, he went out and told us at the beginning he didn't intend to be a fighting champion. He would have to be forced into defending the title. And... Look at the transformation we've seen. I mean, MJF, I do think he's had a positive influence. The friendship with Adam Cole changed him. He had never had a friend before, and he had never really understood what sportsmanship and competition uh, in a fair wrestling match is all about. I don't think he had ever uh, understood the virtues of hard work, and I think he's <laughs> learned some valuable lessons. And for me, MJF has become a fighting champion. So I, don't, I think he was fighting battles, mandatory battles, when this started. <laughs> and uh, he was fighting great matches. He was in incredible bouts. But frankly, I don't think he wanted to be there. And now MJF has really found this love of competition. And all of a sudden, he's in great matches. We're seeing MJF defending the title on TV. It's been great. Hopefully, for MJF, it keeps going. But on the other hand, Switchblade Jay White looks pretty great with that championship belt. He's been on an amazing run in AEW. Nobody has ever pinned Jay White. He's been in the ring with so many of the top stars in AEW. And time after time, we've seen Jay White come out on top. So I cannot wait for full gear this weekend, Jay White versus MJF. I think it's going to be incredible. I've been wanting to see it a long time, like I was saying. And really, in addition to being a great wrestling match, this just feels like it's going to be a real fight. I think these guys are going to beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, and, and you talked about the fact that Jay White looks good with that belt. He has had the belt for the last uh, month and a half at this point. You know, we've talked about MJF having those incredible title defenses. He had a great title defense against Daniel Garcia. He had an amazing title defense against Kenny Omega. Oh. And... Uh, at the end of those title defenses, MJF wasn't able to physically hold the championship that's near and dear to him. I've had people ask me why I don't force Jay White to give him the belt back, why I haven't forced Jay White to relinquish the belt and give it back to MJF. Yeah. I don't think that makes MJF look any stronger. Let the guys fight at the pay-per-view. Yeah, Let absolutely. MJF fight his own yeah. battles. They're going to fight the battle. We're going to see the match at the pay-per-view. If he's going to take the belt back, he's going to have an opportunity to do so. But I don't think it makes MJF any stronger for me to go in and tell Jay White, oh, give him the belt back or play the contractual card. Let these guys settle it in the ring at the pay-per-view this weekend. Because like I said, MJF and Jay White, 24 hours from now, these guys are going to beat the shit out of each other Saturday in the forum. I, I like it. And I think them forcing to have to work out everything, like we benefit from that greatly as fans. I'm very much looking forward to this match. I have loved seeing... Max grow and change over the time that he's been champion. And now he's been champion over a year, I believe, right? No, he has not. Close. No. no, he has not. And in fact, he may not make it to one year. Oh. The uh, 364 days at full gear. Oh. So, so we've got even more uh, It's this. a big milestone potentially there for MJF, too. 
He won the title at Full Gear last year on yeah, November, November 19th. 19th. And My mother's birthday, by hey, the way. Hey, there you Shout go. Out. Happy birthday. It's coming up. That's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> it's great. And, uh, well, in addition to Will's mom's birthday this weekend, we've got a big pay-per-view card. <laughs> <laughs> great and, segue. <laughs> and before the pay-per-view starts, free for everybody worldwide, it's the Zero Hour. Yes. And we're going to have a great card, but... First and foremost, we've got this match we've talked about, the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship match. It also involves the Bullet Club Gold and the world champion of AEW, MJF. Very excited for MJF to go out attempting to defend the titles against the guns, and it's really an interesting situation right now. We've seen Samoa Joe, one of the greatest stars in AEW, one of the greatest stars in all of wrestling, trying to interject himself into this situation. We've seen collateral damage with the acclaimed MJF doesn't have a lot of friends, and the acclaimed have tried to be friends to MJF. And unfortunately, uh, they got taken out in the process. Going to be very interesting to see what happens this weekend when MJF goes out there to defend the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship against the Guns and see what happens next in this saga with Samoa Joe trying to offer his services to MJF. You know, we've seen MJF in the past uh, at WrestleDream defend the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles on his own, but he didn't have to later in that night defend the AEW World Championship. And so this is completely uncharted territory for MJF. And now knowing that that situation awaits him, uh, he's going to need the help. Yeah. I think he could. And frankly, at All In, Wembley Stadium, the biggest wrestling show of all time, the most tickets ever sold to any pro wrestling event this past August when AEW went to London. And by the way, those tickets go on sale for next year's Wembley Stadium December show. December 1st. Very soon, December 1st, pre-sale November 27th. We are literally weeks away. We're very, very close to that big on sale. But when you think back to MJF and Adam Cole together defending the championship at Wembley Stadium, that was a level playing field in some ways because when they had to go back out and wrestle in the main event, they were wrestling each other. Jay White is going to be going out there fresh. MJF, he's got a tall task, and it'll be interesting to see uh, what he has to say, and it'll be interesting to see what ends up happening with MJF, the guns, and where Samoa Joe potentially could fit into this. It's, it's wild. It's, it's funny to think that like a year ago, I wouldn't be thinking about like, well, MJF has more than one friend, maybe? I don't know. MJF never had friends. And now seeing his budding relationship with Adam Cole, and you know, as much as the acclaimed wanted to be his friends, it's just been so wonderful to watch. And he's had friends in... Uh, maybe in description he would have used in the past. But to go. be honest, every time he's had a friendly relationship, he had stabbed the person in the back. Mm -hmm. And Adam Cole was the first time I think he really embraced the friendship and, and found out what it was to have a real friend. It's and beautiful. It's the first time we've seen MJF not screw somebody over. And <laughs> ever since then, he's been a breath of fresh air in pro wrestling. He's been... This completely changed man. He's been this great champion. and I never would have expected it. I don't know if anybody would have, but you know MJF, certainly I'm very excited about his match with Jay White, but before the pay-per-view starts, everybody will have a chance, free worldwide, to see that big match with MJF and potentially a mystery partner going out and defending the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship against the Guns. It's going to be good. I'm excited for that. It's, it's going to be, be a good. great night of wrestling. We've got a lot of great things in store. And speaking of the big championship matches, we have a rematch from All Out, the incredible main event of All Out, one of the greatest pay-per-views in AEW history. We're on this amazing run. <laughs> I think we're on the best run of pay-per-views in the history of AEW. 100% agree. And it feels like it really started when Collision hit. I believe it made a big difference. Going from three hours of TV every week to five hours of TV every week, it helped us build up the pay-per-views, establish more of the roster every week. It's just more wrestling, more opportunities to build these big matches throughout the show. Since then, we've had Forbidden Door in Toronto, amazing. The aforementioned All In at Wembley Stadium. All Out, which we're about to have a little conversation about right now. And then Wrestle Dream. Mm -hmm. All these shows have been great, and that's a perfect segue into this weekend's Full Gear. Got to keep that amazing streak of great pay-per-views going. 
And All Out was one of my personal favorite shows, and the main event was off the charts. Amazing. Phenomenal show. Absolutely great. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, that main event, of course, being the international championship defended by the then reigning international champion, Orange Cassidy, against John Moxley. And here we are again in a situation where Orange Cassidy is going to defend that international championship against John Moxley. A very different Orange Cassidy, though, we're seeing. Orange Cassidy seems not quite satisfied with this championship run this time around. And it feels like he, he's not gonna find that satisfaction until he gets that victory back over John Moxley. Yeah, uh, he's definitely built this match up as the end all be all. And for a man who's made so many title defenses and put so much great prestige into that AEW International Championship, of all the matches, I think this match against John Moxley means more than all of the dozens of Orange Cassidy championship matches combined. Every great match in that reign, you add them up, and I think this one match that he's got against John Moxley means more to Orange Cassidy this weekend at AEW Full Gear compared to every other match he's ever had combined. This is a different Orange Cassidy. He's more focused. He was a great champion the first time around, and this time around, to me, it starts and ends and everything about this reign to him is about Orange Cassidy. He needs to beat John Moxley. But listen to what John Moxley had to say on Dynamite. Uh, that was pretty interesting, and it was a very interesting result when John Moxley and Wheeler Yuta picked up the win over Orange Cassidy and Hook this past Wednesday on an amazing AEW Dynamite go home show. What a great way to start a great show on Wednesday, too. And yeah, Tony, you brought up what John Moxley had to say, and I felt so much out of that. I, I was literally standing just feet away, just listening to John Moxley talk and how much he reminded us of what he took out of Orange Cassidy in that main event at All Out. Uh, that was a level of intensity we hadn't quite seen out of Orange Cassidy ever before in that match. And we know that John Moxley is the guy to bring that out of Orange Cassidy. And, to, and I question at this point now, does Orange Cassidy have that gear in him again? Can he get to that level again? Because if not, it's another game over situation for him, and we could end up with another brand new AEW international champion in John Moxley. Well, John Moxley could very well regain the title, and a big question I had going into that tag team match, is John Moxley 100%? We saw him go to New Japan. He looked excellent. Definitely that answered some questions because John Moxley himself was out with injury. Mm -hmm. Orange Cassidy pointed out he was able to sustain a long run without an injury but this championship everybody else who's held it has had a major injury that's jammed them up mm -hmm. and when you think about it uh john moxley certainly has been yeah. arguably the most dominant wrestler in the history of aew 100 and really had never had a major injury or issue that had held him up in the ring it was the first time i can remember seeing john moxley get hurt in the ring and get slowed down and it came in this international championship run. And then when he came back to the ring, I questioned, is he ready? Is he 100%? Because at a stage a few weeks ago, we thought John was going to be returning. And the doctors asked us to hold out and wait. They said, mm -hmm. we don't think he's quite 100%. Please don't push him. Well, that opened the door for Orange Cassidy in a major way. It opened the door for Orange Cassidy to go back in and get that rematch, regain the championship, and now that John Moxley is cleared for competition, it sets the stage for one of the biggest, most important rematches in the history of AEW, rematch of one of our great pay-per-view main events and one of our best pay-per-views ever coming up this weekend, Orange Cassidy versus John Moxley 2 for the International Championship. And I thought on Wednesday, Mox answered every question about where he's at. He looks better than ever. This match is going to be absolutely incredible. All Out was by far my favorite show I think we've ever done. And there's so many matches that came out of that that I'm just like, oh, my God, this is so good. And Orange Cassidy and Mox, we know it's going to be a banger. We know it's going to be great. We know what both of those guys are capable of doing. This is going to be an excellent title match that I'm so, so excited to watch this Saturday. Also exciting matches like, oh, my God, please, 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 let's talk about this. Adam Copeland is at AEW. I am still so, so pumped about this. Like the surprise entrance of him at the end of Wrestle Dream was just like, oh, mm, chef's kiss. So good. And then, of course... We see him get involved with the patriarchy. 
<laughs> Christian Gage, his old buddy, and seeing how this has just kind of come about, it's so great. We're going to get to see Adam Copeland and Sting, which is something I never thought I would say, with Darby Allen versus Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, and Nick Wayne. Like, if you had told me two months ago that this was a match I was going to see, I was going to call you crazy. But now, I'm just, oh, man, I want to punch Nick Wayne in the face. Well, I'm, so, I'm so excited for that match. It's amazing that we're going to get to see Sting and Darby teaming up with Adam Copeland. And we talk about this great run of pay-per-views we're on. Our last pay-per-view was Wrestle Dream. So good. It was the inaugural Wrestle Dream. Of course, we paid tribute to the late, great Antonio Inoki. We went to Seattle and in Darby Allen's hometown, he had a classic pay-per-view main event with Christian Cage on a classic pay-per-view. Certainly up there with any pay-per-view we've ever done and part of this incredible run. And what a great way to debut a new franchise with Wrestle Dream. What a great main event, top to bottom, a great show, and then a great ending with Adam Copeland arriving oh. in AEW. Since then, I've been wanting to see this trios match, and I'm very excited about it. It's awesome we have this on the card it's going to be a great match and i'm very excited at full gear that we're able to offer the fans the patriarchy <sighs> this new group christian Love cage it. is formed with luchasaurus and nick wayne who we saw pick up the win on collision this past weekend and those guys going up against this dream team of sting and darby and adam copeland i think it's going to be a lot of fun and that's what full gear is all about yeah, I, I, you know, honestly, I, I was with everybody else when we saw that Adam Copeland was coming in to AEW. You know, the first thought I think everybody had was, oh, we're going to see him and Christian Cage and it's going to be great. and They're going to be uh, aligned again and we're going to see one of the greatest tag teams of all time go nope. on another run again. Nope. And, uh, <laughs> and then, of course, Christian Cage had those famous words at the end of uh, Dynamite just a few weeks ago. Yes, and, those uh, very famous words. <laughs> those very, very famous words. And uh, it changed the entire landscape of what we thought was their friendship. And it's changed the, the landscape of everything. And, you know, for a while, Adam Copeland said he wasn't going to step in the ring with Christian Cage. But obviously, at this point, uh, we, we, it's, it's gone too far. We've seen that... Uh, Christian Cage is willing to do and say anything at this point, and Adam Copeland took a stand. Absolutely. And, uh, teaming with Sting and Darby again, like you mentioned, a, a dream team. Dream. Boy, they look great this they past did. weekend on they Collision. Did. That was a lot yeah. of fun. Really fun main event on Collision. I thought the first ever Sting, Darby, and Adam Copeland match, their trios match versus Jake Roberts' team of Lance Archer and the Righteous. What a fun trios main event. Great way for Sting, Darby Allen, and Adam Copeland to make their debut as a trio, but it could be their last match ever as a trio this yeah. weekend at Full Gear because they are up against a tall task and Quite a potentially grim fate awaits them Oof. at Full Gear. We know that Sting is on the road to this potential retirement match at Revolution 2024, early next year, but Christian has said that Sting is not going to make it to Revolution. No. In fact, he doesn't see Sting making it past full gear. Oh, oh, I'm really worried. But at the same time, I'm so excited. I, I'm so conflicted. <laughs> I, I have faith in Sting. I oh, think, as do uh, I. Sting has, has not let me down in this AEW run so far. and He's been phenomenal. Uh, I, I, I trust and I... This is why Adam Copeland would want to seek out Sting. This is why Darby Allen has stuck by Sting this whole time. You can trust in Sting. I believe in Sting. It's the greatest streak in the history of AEW. Since Sting returned to the ring at Revolution 2021, he has never lost a match. Sting is unbeaten. It is historic. And if this is Sting's last run, as he said it is, and I believe that it is, what a way to go out. It has been a storybook ending, but unfortunately, I believe Christian Cage wants to plan a tragic ending for Sting tomorrow, this Saturday, at Full Gear. It's it's so great that we get to experience this as fans, that as employees, like we get to enjoy, and enjoy the excitement of our coworkers and see that the achievements they're going through and like everything that Sting, Sting's whole run at AEW has been phenomenal. And... I just, I'm so grateful that we're getting as much time with Sting as we are. And so I, I know that we're all going to enjoy seeing him in the ring one more time in, on Saturday because how many more times do we have? We well, it's a limited amount of time. Very for limited. Sure. 
a three-year run, a three-year run would be amazing. A three-year undefeated run would be even more incredible. But it all hinges on this weekend, AEW Full Gear, this Saturday in Los Angeles on pay-per-view. It is on pay-per-view. It is on Bleacher Report. It is on Fight TV Internationally. It is on Select Movie Theaters. You can get tickets. Come to us. Come see us at the Kia Forum, AEWTix.com. It's going to be an awesome show. We always put on impeccable pay-per-views, and we have so much more to talk about here on AEW Unrestricted. This is AEW Unrestricted. We are talking full gear with Tony Khan. We've got a huge pay-per-view this Saturday in Los Angeles at the Kia Forum. Please come out and see the show. You know AEW shows, especially our pay-per-views, are absolutely phenomenal. Tickets, AEWTix.com. Watch it on pay-per-view, traditional pay-per-view. You can watch it on Bleach Report. You can watch it at Fight TV internationally and select movie theaters. We've already talked about so many of the amazing matches that are happening, but one that I am so excited for, and I've loved seeing the story progress, is Hangman and Swerve. Swerve is just this phenomenal wrestler and he's turned into just this evil person. And Hangman, who is just, you know, I feel like he's he's a product of AEW. He's a face of AEW. He's been a part from the beginning. And seeing the two of them face off both at Wrestle Dream and in the ring, on, on the microphone, it's I'm so, so phenomenally excited. About I this cannot match. wait. And I'm so excited that this is going to be a Texas death match. Yes! Every time we've had a Texas death match in AEW, it's delivered. Every time Hangman's been in a Texas death match, it's delivered. Yep. And Swerve has been in some amazing AEW pay per view matches. These are two of our top stars. I cannot wait. This has become such a bitter rivalry. And, of course, at Wrestle Dream, it was a match we were really looking forward to. And it was a match that, in many ways, was about competition. Mm -hmm. This is no longer about competition. This is a blood feud, and I'm so excited for the Texas Death Match, Hangman Page versus Swerve Strickland, this weekend on Saturday at AEW Full Gear. And, of course, it was a couple years ago where we saw Hangman Page win the World Championship at Full Gear. From Kenny Omega, the year before that, he was in an incredible match with Kenny Omega. Of course, in the finals of the Eliminator Tournament, we've seen Hangman have some amazing matches at Full Gear. And last year, it was where Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee, of course, went back, tried to regain the AEW Tag Team Championship in the great rubber match in that amazing rivalry, Keith and Swerve versus the Acclaimed. Swerve Strickland in the past year has risen to the top ranks of AEW as a single star. We went into Wrestle Dream, and Swerve Strickland talked about taking Hangman's spot as one of the top stars. I don't know if he's taken that spot because I think they're both top stars, but mm -hmm. certainly Agreed. Swerve, no doubt, he is in the top echelon of single stars now. Both these men have been world tag team champions. Hangman Page has also been the world champion. He's been to the top of the mountain in singles wrestling. I think this match has everything. You've got two great wrestlers. You've got the great rivalry. Will, I know you're very close to Swerve Strickland out of the ring. Uh, we all have a great relationship with Hangman. Everybody gets along Everybody with Hangman, Hangman, but you're one of the few people that gets along with Swerve. I get along with Swerve, like but there's Swerve. not many of us. There's only a few of us. And I can't wait for this match. Will, I know you're excited. I'm excited. This is going to be great. Yeah, uh, I, I will say that I'm actually really nervous for this match. It's just uh, It's a Texas death match. Yeah. And this is a match that uh, Hangman has really made a name for himself and he of course had a texas death match with uh lance archer he faced uh adam cole he faced john moxley just earlier this year and in all three matches he walked away the victor and this is one of those matches that uh you would fully expect hangman adam page to walk away victorious in but at the same time Swerve Strickland has gotten under hangman adam page's skin this match as you mentioned at wrestle dream it started based in competition. And here we are in a very personal, heated rivalry now. This is no longer about competition. This is truly about blood. And knowing that Swerve Strickland, he crossed the line. You know, you talk about the fact that I, I know this man, but I don't know that man that walked into this guy's house. He stood over the baby crib. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know who that guy <sighs> is. And knowing that he went that far, I don't know if that's enough to drive Hangman to victory 
or if it's going to serve as a distraction. Well, it was a big gamble in a lot of ways by Scorer. Yes. A big gamble. <laughs> right. A risky move. And also, uh, you know, not only a risky move legally, but also a risky move to piss off Hangman Page, who can be a scary guy when he's pissed. And now, Hangman, we've never seen him this upset. What a promo by Hangman Page. Good Lord. That was amazing stuff. Uh, he has really stepped up into a new level of intensity. I think Hangman Page, Swerve Strickland, Texas Deathmatch is going to be incredible. And like I said, every time we've had a Texas Deathmatch, in particular when Hangman Page is involved, they've been great matches. And with these two, you know that's going to be a great match this Saturday at AEW Full Gear. It's almost a case of be careful what you wish for. When mm -hmm. this all started, mm -hmm. Swerve Strickland talked about wanting to see some of the old fire from Hangman Adam Page. And if he wasn't going to give him that, then get out of the way. I'm coming for your spot. And he lit that fire under Hangman Adam Page, but it feels like at this point, did he bite off more than he could chew? Because yeah. you don't want this side of Hangman Adam Page, not in a Texas death match. And Swerve Strickland and Hangman are going to go that far this Saturday at Full Gear. I can't wait. And it's going to be a great show, and that's certainly one of the matches we're most excited about is that Texas death match, Hangman versus Swerve. And speaking of all the great matches up and down the card, Another match I've been looking forward to, a very special event. It's the AEW Women's World Championship match. Hikaru Shida versus Tony Storm. Of course, Tony Storm has dubbed this her Hollywood homecoming. Ugh. And I can't wait to see Tony versus Shida at the forum for the AEW Women's World Championship. Two of the greatest stars we've ever had in AEW. Two of the greatest women's world champions going one-on-one. -on -one. They've both been to the top of the mountain. I can't wait for this match. I'm, I'm in particular very excited about this for multiple reasons. Tony Storm is doing some of the best work of her career. She's absolutely phenomenal. I love this new uh, evolution of Tony Storm. Every time she's on my screen, I'm just falling in love with her even more. But then we see Sheeta, who has the most reigns as uh, AEW Women's Champion. She has the longest reign. She's the current champion. And every time she's in the ring, she puts on phenomenal matches. So you have two incredible wrestlers in the ring fighting for a prize that they have both had. This is on paper just going to be a phenomenal match. Yeah, I can't wait for this. And also, there's a lot to look at here. These two have teamed. Mm -hmm. They've been on opposite sides of the ring. And since then, we've really seen Tony have a complete transformation. Uh, Timeless Tony Storm is a revelation. Oh. She's one of the most amazing people we've seen on screen in AEW, and the fans are really behind her. But we have yet to see, since Tony became Timeless Tony Storm, her step up into a championship match, and she's stepping into the ring with the greatest world champion we've ever had, Hikaru Shida. And Hikaru Shida has looked phenomenal since she regained the championship. You know, I, I think a lot about the face-to-face -face the two of them had uh, just last week on Dynamite. And uh, when Sheeta asked, what happened to you? And Tony responded, you happened to me. Oh. And I, I, I felt that because oh. when you really think back to Dynamite 200, when Tony Storm walked in as the AEW Women's World Champion on her path to Wembley, and that path was stopped by Hikaru Shida, who became a two-time AEW Women's World Champion, defeating her for the championship that night. And Sheeta has just been on a roll this year. As Tony Schiavone pointed out last week, she's unpinned in 2023. She has not submitted in 2023. She ha is on the run of her career. Mm -hmm. And in the process of doing that, she's picked up the championship twice this year. Yep. But Tony Storm, we've seen a complete reinvention of herself. And like you said, we've yet to see what that's going to do in this ch type of championship situation. But at the same time, uh, it's hard to bet against the champion in this case because she's had Tony's number before. This is so much fun. Like I said, this is oh. one of my favorite weekends in wrestling. Full Gear is always such a great show. This card in particular is stacked, and these are the kinds of matches, Hikaru Shida versus Tony Storm for the Women's World Championship that really get me even more pumped up about it because these are two amazing professionals. I love working in AEW, and in particular, these are two of my favorite wrestlers to work with. Hikaru Shida is such a great champion because she always wants to go out and fight. She's willing to fight anybody, anytime, anyplace. We've seen it over and over again. All the great matches she has. 
She's willing to defend the championship anytime, any place. And Hikaru Shida is such a great pleasure to work with. And to be honest, for me personally, I really enjoy Timeless Tony Storm. And there are not a lot of people who Timeless Tony Storm, pun intended, gives the time of day to. I am one of the few people. Uh, <laughs> she thinks I'm the boss of the studio. She thinks uh, this is a, a movie studio. Hey, right up, man. In a way, <laughs> I guess. I think this is a wrestling business, not a, not a movie studio. But uh, she's entitled to her opinion. And certainly, Timeless Tony Storm, one of the great stars of the silent film era and one of the great pro wrestlers in 2023. Yeah, uh, I, I've, I've got to be honest. Uh, I, I and I wish this was not a true story, but it is a true story. But I went to talk to Timeless Tony Storm, and I had my watch on at the time, and she looked at me and she said, "This is timeless. Take your watch off." <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, there will be no time, and I'm like, "Okay, fine." It's legit. Yeah, this is legit. This is a very, very true story, and uh, and knowing who Tony Storm has become at this point, I am very much looking forward to seeing this Hollywood homecoming at full gear at the Forum. This is the best. This is just the best. <gasps> and uh, I can't wait for this show. There's so much to look forward to. And speaking of the big championship matches, we've got a four-way match oh. for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. <gasps> of course, the former champions, FTR, coming back for the belts. They'll be taking on... The Kings of the Black Throne, two-thirds of the former World Trios champions, the House of Black, Malachi Black and Brody King, one of the most devastating tag teams we've seen in AEW. Just like we talked about, Sheeta's been on this amazing run. It's been so long since we've seen Sheeta pinned or submitted. It's been nearly two years since the Kings of the Black Throne have lost a match by pin or submission. It's been an amazing run. They're great champions. When you have great champions like FTR, great champions like Kings of the Black Throne, that's a great start. What about the return of Roosh ah. coming with his brother, Dralistico? I can't wait to see LFI step into this match. And, of course, we have the AEW World Tag Team Champions on a very hot run, Absolute Ricky Starks and Big Bill. And Absolute Ricky Starks was really mad about this. He was really upset that he has to defend the championship against multiple people. And, you know, I get that. I think Absolute Ricky Starks is having one of the best years of anyone in AEW. Talk about all the great matches he's been in on this incredible run. Singles matches, tag matches. I mean, we saw Ricky Starks in the very first match of the year in AEW battling Chris Jericho to start the year. And throughout the year, he's been on top in big matches. And now, for the first time, he's a world champion. And he's found a partner. He's found a heater. He's found a badass in Big Bill. And he doesn't think they should have to go out and wrestle three teams. Uh, you know, uh, I hear what he's saying. So I hear what you're saying, Ricky Starks, and I'm taking it under advisement, and that's all I can say, but I, but I hear what you're saying. Hmm. And uh, that being said, talk about a great slate of tag team competition. AEW known for great tag teams. And right now we have some teams on the shelf with injury that are getting close to coming back. So the scene to close 2023, I honestly believe, is going to be hotter than it's ever been. We also have another huge match on the show that we'll talk about later in the tag team division. But this match in particular, to have these four teams, to have FTR, who throughout the year since they came back, we've seen FTR just on fire. What a great run. Maybe the best run anybody's had as a world tag team champions from when they regained it throughout the year, all the great matches they've had. Their match against Jay White and Juice Robinson and their matches, mm -hmm. amazing. And in particular, the match in Calgary, two out of three falls, I think is arguably the best television match I've ever seen in pro wrestling. One of the best wrestling matches I've ever seen. I was really fortunate to be there and very proud to have been involved in producing that match on TV. And FTR versus Jay White and Juice Robinson, that was an amazing match. FTR, time in, time out. They've had so many great defenses. They had a great match with the Young Bucks at Wembley Stadium. All the times we've seen FTR go out defending the title and wrestling, no matter what it is, singles, tags, uh, eight-man, trios, whatever, FTR willing to fight any place, any time. We talked about Hikaru Shida, how she has that mentality, and I think Dax and Cash bring that to the tag team division. They're such great fighting champions that it cost them the titles. They went out, and I don't think they were nearly 100%, Cash in particular, when they no. defended the belt against Ricky Starks and Big Bill. And Big Bill and Ricky Starks capitalized. They took advantage of that opportunity, became new champions. And now 
the belts are up for grabs. You've got all these great teams in there. And ever since Roosh returned to Collision, man, that's been special. I think he's such a great talent. We just signed his brother, Dralistico, officially. We made Dralistico all elite. Very excited about that. And going into this pay-per-view, I think it bodes really, really well to have four great tag teams when you've got this hot division and the hot scene we're cultivating. And, man, the House of Black. What a year for them, too. Malachi and Brody, so many great matches. They were great trios champions. But to me, I think Malachi and Brody are a great team. Any two of the House of Black, Buddy as well, can go in and... Any combination. Whatever it is, whether it's singles, tags, trios, like we were saying about FTR, how they've been effective, different match types. I think House of Black are the same way. And in particular, the Kings of the Black Throne, these guys are dominant. And I'm really excited about this match. And like I said, I think Starks has a point. It's very hard for the champion to go out there in a four-way... In theory, on paper, you have a 25% chance to retain, at least in a vacuum. But wrestling matches are not played out on paper. And I cannot wait to see this one played out because it is going to be a hard-hitting, very intense match. And again, this is one of those matches where I think these guys are just going to beat the shit out of each other. Oh, 100%. So, so excited. I mean, especially, like, given the difference in all of these teams but how much drive each of them individually has like i love when we saw lfi come back like roosh his he's leaned down his english is phenomenal and he, he's he's building that same enthusiasm within preston and drillistico well if you mess with the bull you know what you get you get the horns yeah that's true it's great <laughs> you know and uh just thinking about the the current state of the AEW tag team division, and, and as you mentioned, you know, by the end of 2023, um, this this could be uh, probably the best the division's ever looked. And uh, you know, thinking about some of the history of brother tag teams that we've had in AEW, and we've had the Guns, and we've got the Hardys, and we've got the Young Bucks, and we've got the Lucha Bros. But Dralistico and Roosh is a combination that I think could. Go for a run at that top spot. Easily. I think that that's a team Easily. that uh, a, a lot of people weren't necessarily expecting. But now that we have them, it's one that we want to see a lot more out of. Absolutely. Oh, oh, yeah. I really believe in them. I wanted to showcase them. They had competed in the Jay Briscoe Reach for the Sky Ladder match, which was a great match. Speaking of great teams, of course, we lost Dante for that match, but Dante's mending up. That's going to be somebody coming back when we get top flight back in the division. I can't wait for that. One mm. of my personal favorite teams. That was a great match, the Jay Briscoe reach for the Sky Ladder match. And I think it opened a lot of people's eyes what a great team Roosh and Dralisico are. You talk about all these great brother teams. Top flight's another one. Mm. And with all these great teams we have, I think this is a great showcase to have this great four-way match. And we've seen these teams butting heads week in, week out uh, on collision. So talk about a great opportunity for all four of these teams when you've got the belts up for grabs in a four-way match with LFI, Roosh and Dravlistico versus FTR versus the Kings of the Black Throne, Malachi and Brody versus the World Tag Team Champions, Absolute Ricky Starks and Big Bill. That's going to be a great, great match. So good. And it's all coming up this Saturday on pay-per-view at the LA Forum. Can't wait. For this pay-per-view, year in, year out, Full Gear delivers. We have such a great time there. Uh, one of my favorite Full Gear memories, personally, Full Gear 2020. Got to produce the show sitting next to one of my heroes, somebody who's played great games and has some great memories for me as a fan in the forum, although he won his championships in the Staples Center, and that's Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. One of the highlights <laughs> of my life was Shaq sitting in the gorilla position or the Mongo position as we've come to call it here in AEW. And of course to have Shaq sitting with me producing the show, that was wild. He's one of my heroes. And then of course to later get in the ring, uh, Shaq is amazing. And to go to the forum makes me think of the Lakers and so many great memories, great moments in the forum. Tony, that was a great full gear. There's been so many great full gears. Like there's so many memories. I remember running down the ramp at 
the um, Target Center in Minneapolis watching, about to see Hangman win the title. Like there's so many amazing moments happening in full gear and everyone is in store for a phenomenal show that will just add to that pile of memories. This Saturday, tomorrow at the Kia Forum in Los Angeles, you can watch it on pay-per-view. You can watch it live at awtix.com. You can watch it on Bleacher Report. You can watch it on Fight TV internationally. You can watch it in select movie theaters. Definitely watch it. Tune in. There's so much more to talk about, including some Twitter breaking news from Tony Khan. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's oh. definitely gotten a lot of uh, people talking, and it's going to be a... Big signing for AEW, to say the least, hours from now, coming up at Full Gear. We have so much more to talk about. Great matches, great moments coming up hours from now in Los Angeles, live on pay-per-view. We'll talk about it all, what's coming up at Full Gear, next on Unrestricted. Welcome back to AEW Unrestricted. We're talking about Full Gear. We're just hours away from heading to the Forum. It's one of the biggest nights of the year. An exciting time in professional wrestling. But speaking of exciting times, no one knows how to create exciting times better than Tony Khan. This guy. Because you've created some excitement just over the last couple of days on social media. <sighs> making the announcement. I want to say tweeting. We still say tweeting, posting. But either way, you posted tweeting. about an exciting deal you just closed. <gasps> and uh, the world is wondering what's going on. I wonder. Well, I've agreed to terms with one of the best wrestlers on the planet, somebody that is known and respected by virtually every AEW fan in the world. I cannot wait for this top star to arrive this Saturday in Los Angeles and officially sign their AEW contract at full gear. And it's fitting to do it at one of AEW's greatest events, at one of wrestling's greatest events, at the entertainment capital of the world, in one of LA's premium venues, the Forum, one of my personal favorite buildings in the entire world. I cannot wait to bring this great star to AEW officially and have this contract signed at full gear. I, I have no idea who it is, and I'm so excited. <laughs> This is AEW. This is what we do best. And uh, I mean, Tony never disappoints. Anytime we have a fun, exciting signing, it's like, cool, great. Who's this awesome person we're going to get to watch incredible matches with? I can't wait. It's This is the best. And I could sit around and talk about great wrestling and AEW with the two of you all day. I love doing this. It's the best job in the world. And being able to put on events like Full Gear, sign the greatest stars, it's the best. I cannot wait for that. There's so much to look forward to. As Will said, we are hours away from AEW Full Gear on Saturday. And there's so much great wrestling on this card. We've talked about the great matches. We've talked about championship matches. Something I'm looking forward to, the three-way match for the TBS Championship at Wrestle Dream. What a great match it was. Chris Statlander versus Julia Hart. So good. And justified this is awesome chance. Oh, absolutely justified this is awesome chance. Statlander and Julia tore the house down. And Chris Statlander's been on an amazing run since she won that TBS championship. Since she returned to AEW at Double or Nothing, Chris Statlander has been lights out awesome. She yes. has just been phenomenal. And this match, I can't wait for this. We've seen Statlander take on all competition, and we talk about these great champions. That's another wrestler I love to work with because Chris Statlander wants to fight any place, any time. She's always willing to fight, always willing to defend her championship. And Chris Statlander this weekend defending in a three-way match. We saw both of her opponents win great matches on AEW TV recently. Incredible field. It's just an incredible field of competitors. Yes. Uh, you know, when you talk about... Uh, you know, we had Julia Hart defeat the winner of the uh, 2023 Owen Hart Foundation Cup, uh, Willow Nightingale. And so, again, we're talking about just the two incredible performers there. And then on the other side of that, we saw Sky Blue defeat Red Velvet. Red Velvet has been on an incredible run since she's been back. Just Yeah, looking... three great matches this week. Out of the I gate. Mean, she, having been out for nine months, came back in one week, three great matches. Not wasting and, any time. you know, if Red Velvet had pulled it off one, two out of three, she'd be in this great position to have earned a title shot. Mm -hmm. And in the process, she earned a lot of respect. But somebody who has been earning respect all year and has caught fire this summer herself sky blue mm -hmm. sky blue earned her place in this match and we've seen a darker side of sky blue since she received that mist in the face from julia hart sky blue is a longtime friend of chris statlander and willow the aforementioned 2023 owen hart foundation cup winner and gosh we've seen 
uh, an incredible, incredible amount of uh, great defenses by Chris Statlander. But I think this is her toughest test yet as the champion to go in and take on two great wrestlers. Sky Blue, who has really leveled up in 2023, especially in recent months. And Julia Hart, who is one of the hottest wrestlers in AEW. And the only person in AEW who seems to have Julia Hart's number is Chris Statlander. It was Chris Statlander going into Wrestle Dream who had been the last person to beat Julia Hart. Julia had a winning streak of over a year. And it was Julia Hart who had, I believe, 25 straight wins going into Wrestle Dream. She was in position to win the TBS championship. She might have even been the favorite in that match. And Chris Statlander pulled it out and showed why she's an incredible champion. And she's a fighting champion. And it's going to be a great match when Chris Statlander defends it in a three-way versus Julia Hart and Sky Blue hours from now, this Saturday on pay-per-view in Los Angeles at AEW Full Gear. The thing that I'm most excited about with three ways is that the champion doesn't actually need to be involved in the pin to lose their title. So we see all of these women getting to be who they are and be the incredible wrestlers they are. Chris Tellender doesn't need to even be involved. Yeah. And that's kind of terrifying, but also very exciting for all of us as fans. We're walking in. We're not knowing what to expect. Think about all the great three-way championship matches there have been in AEW, and this has the potential to be a phenomenal match. I can't wait for this. Easily. It's going to be very exciting. All three of these great women deserve this spot, and I'm very excited to be able to get this on this great pay-per-view show. Cannot wait for Chris Statlander versus Sky Blue versus Julia Hart this Saturday for the TBS Championship at AEW Full Gear. Really just shows what the level of competition is and what it represents and what the TBS yeah. title really represents. And I just yeah. think this match... Uh, again, you know, I talked about the field of competition that led to this match and to think about how it could have been any one of those women that got here. But the three that we got, this match is going to deliver. Absolutely. So good. Speaking of these great matches, speaking of this great card, there's another great match to talk about. We spoke earlier about how the AEW tag team division is heating up. There's a great championship match, great teams all vying for that AEW World Tag Team Championship. And there are two teams fighting with a title shot on the line, a title shot anytime, any place of their choosing, and something else on the line. A team that picked up a great win in a very unique match, <laughs> Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, two of the greatest champions ever in AEW, teaming up. These two great stars from Winnipeg, Canada, they are very different, but they do have a lot in common, and they formed a great bond and a great team. They're going to be taking on one of the greatest tag teams of all time. The former AEW World Tag Team Champions, one of the most decorated teams ever. Kenny Omega's best friends, the Young Bucks. That's going to be a great match. If Jericho and Omega win, they lay claim to that tag team title shot that the Bucks are sitting on. Ooh. That could be huge. But if the Young Bucks win, they have a chance to stop Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho from ever teaming again. And they really don't seem like they enjoy the Kenny Omega-Chris Jericho friendship. And it seems like it's put a dent on things between the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. But on the other hand, I think Chris Jericho has helped Kenny Omega. We've seen Kenny Omega turn a major corner this week. Kenny Omega had been really, frankly, attacked. He had been, I think, maligned. He had been targeted by the Don Callis family. And throughout all these great AEW pay-per-views recently, it's almost been a theme of Don Callis trying to rain on the parade of Kenny Omega. And it was awesome this past Wednesday on AEW Dynamite to see Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, along with Paul White and Kota Ibushi, pick up the win in the Like a Dragon Gaiden street fight sponsored by Sega. Yes. That was great. Talk about an awesome match. We did very well on the sponsorship, and we put on a great dynamite. But I don't know if Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho can be 100% going into this match. But the Young Bucks themselves went through a great match. We saw the Young Bucks pull out all the stops, to say the least, to win the match in their hometown against that great tandem of Penta El Zero Miedo and Young Prodigy Commander. What a great match that was. Both these teams are in a great position going into this Saturday, hours from now, Young Bucks versus Jericho 
and Omega, so much on the line. You know, there's so much history here when it comes to everyone involved in this match. You know, you think about um, a lot of people would say that if it wasn't for uh, Kenny Omega and, and Chris Jericho and the history between those two, would there even be an AEW? Yes, and to talk about that, those are two of the wrestlers for me that without Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega and the great match they had in Japan in the Tokyo Dome in 2018, certainly that helped create a business case when I was able to launch AEW and that helped make this possible. And then when we had our first ever pay-per-view event, the first double or nothing, that was the main event. They're two of the first champions ever in AEW. And I think looking at the history of this show, Full Gear, we've had so many great events. These are four of the greatest wrestlers ever in Full Gear. And mm -hmm. each of them has been involved in a historic moment, historic match, historic win. Chris Jericho, the first Full Gear, we saw him make the first ever world title defense. Chris Jericho versus Cody was a great match. And Chris Jericho's had great moments at Full Gear. Kenny Omega, great matches with Hangman Page. And we saw Kenny Omega win the Full Gear Eliminator Tournament earn a title shot that he converted, became champion, and held the title for almost a year up until the rematch with Hangman Page at Full Gear 21. And the Young Bucks won the AEW World Tag Team Championship for the first time at Full Gear 2020 versus FTR in one of the greatest tag team matches I've ever seen. And all four of these men are a huge part of AEW history. All four of these men have a chance to steal the show. This is going to be a great match. The Young Bucks versus Jericho and Omega. This Saturday, hours from now in Los Angeles at Full Gear. And it feels so personal. Uh, you know, it, it feels so right, but it also feels like something that, you know, uh, the Young Bucks have shown a lot of their... I'd say traditional side in, in the least traditional sense <laughs> and that we're, we're seeing a lot of who the young bucks have, have really shown us that they are over the years. Uh, but in a lot of ways, a lot of people have felt like what the young bucks have had to say is right. That, you know, they reunited the elite last year. They were the first ever AEW trios champions. And then we got to see a big reunion of the elite just earlier this year. Um, they wrestled in blood and guts together. And you could sense that the Bucks really took pride in the elite being a functioning unit again. And so they do feel slighted by Chris Jericho coming in and forming the Golden Jets with Kenny Omega. And for a lot of fans of the elite, they feel there's some justification there. But on the other side of that, you can't deny the success that Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega have found as a team. And when something is working, when you think about historically teams that uh, that may surprise you in a sense, we, we talked earlier about um, Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee. We've talked about Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega having one of the greatest tag team title runs that we've seen in AEW. And when you find success in a tag team, you never want to diminish that. You never want to... Um, you never want to take or you never want to put that flame out. And these two are on a great run together. But the young bucks don't want to see it. They want to see the elite back together. You know what I want to see? I want to see these guys wrestle on Saturday. Yeah, and that's absolutely <laughs> it. That's, that, more than that, these are four incredible wrestlers, four all-time great professional wrestlers, and four guys who I think are going to tear the house down at full gear. And Chris Jericho himself is having a phenomenal year in AEW. He's had so many great matches this year, time in, time out. One year ago at this time, Chris Jericho was the Ocho. And ah. in the past year, we've seen him deliver so many awesome matches. And in particular, here with Kenny Omega, we talk about how Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks bring the best out of each other. I also think Chris Jericho has been bringing the best out of Kenny Omega recently. I we agree. saw Kenny Omega, as I said, get over a hump finally get that big win against the Don Callis family in a match that was so personal for Kenny. That Sega Street fight meant so much to him. And now to have uh, Kenny Omega teaming with Jericho against his closest friends and in many ways his greatest rivals, the yes. Young Bucks, I think this is setting the stage for such an awesome match. We've talked about all these great matches on the show Again, this is a match that I think totally has the potential to steal the show hours from now at AEW Full Gear this Saturday on Pay-Per-View.
And, and you know, we, we talk about um, the history of AEW pay-per-views and the streaks AEW pay-per-views have been on. Um, but we also talk about the Young Bucks. And uh, with this being, I believe, the 25th AEW pay-per-view. Wow. And uh, with this being such, the Young Bucks are the only two AEW stars to have performed and competed on every single AEW pay-per-view. Wow. And knowing what's on the line here, knowing that that guaranteed title shot, that uh, that any time title shot that they earned back at Wrestle Dream is on the line here, that that's how much this means to the Young Bucks to get the elite back together, to, to push Chris Jericho out of the picture and, and be who they believe they are as a group. Um, there's so much at stake here, and I'm so excited for this. It's going to be so great. It's everything about this show. I, I know every time we do one of these podcasts, I sit here and I listen to this card, and I'm just so, so absolutely pumped for the show we're about to have because we are about to witness another phenomenal historic pay-per-view event from AEW, and they're always phenomenal. And, Tony, we can't thank you enough for sharing all of this with us, for letting us be a part of this, for being able to like witness this show, to be a part of this show. It's just so phenomenal. Thank this you so much. It's so fun. I'm having a great time, and this is the best week. I love it. It's one of my favorite weeks of the year. It might be my favorite week of the year. Hey. And we get to do it in all places in Los Angeles, one of my homes, not far from my house. <laughs> and uh, nothing wrong with that. I get to sleep <laughs> in my own bed. And after it's spending... Nice. 51, 52 weeks a year or so on the road. It's nice to sleep on your own bed because wrestling really is uh, a 52-week-a-year business. And this is one of those really special weeks out of those 52. One of my favorites, if not my favorite week of the year, full gear. And the moment we've all been waiting for, it's just hours away, the start of AEW full gear. Just Tell them all about away. it one more time. It is just hours away, Saturday, live at the Kia Forum in Los Angeles. You can see it live, AEWTix.com. You can order it on traditional pay-per-view call. Contact your cable provider. You can watch it on BleacherReport.com. Internationally, you can watch it on Fight TV. You can check it out at your local movie theaters. Just Google it online. It's so great. You should definitely watch Full Gear. We've already talked about all the historic moments that have happened at Full Gear. This amazing card we're going to see. I'm Aubrey Edwards, Will Washington, Tony Khan. You've been listening to AEW Unrestricted.